Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 50th edition of New Directors, New Films, presented by the Museum of Modern Arts and Film at Lincoln Center. My name is La Francis Hui. I am the festival's co-chair and also a film curator at MoMA. New Directors, New Films is supported by Film at Lincoln Center's New Wave membership program, and Film at MoMA is made possible by Chanel, with additional support provided by the Annual Film Fund. Um, joining me now is the director of radiograph of a family, Firuze Kozurvani, who is now in Tehran. Uh, thank you so much for participating in our festival. I thank want you. <laughs> thank you. It's my pleasure. <laughs> and thank you for inviting me, inviting well, myself. Yeah, the committee, yeah. the selection committee really likes this film very much. I want to uh, begin by um, talking about family history. Family history is usually not recorded in formal ways. Stories are often conveyed orally and they, they last as long as our memories last. <laughs> and so in order to make this work, did you do additional research? For example, did you talk to your mother or did you talk to family members and friends? Yeah, this film is piecing together my family history um, of across uh, half a century. Um, yeah, I have talked with my mother uh, during the years of making this film. Um, it is uh, also based on my childhood memories, what I have heard, what I have seen, um, and also, I was trying to find uh, family archives uh, through other members, um, other f family members, and my, um, yeah, many, many other persons gave me the archival Super 8 uh, footages. So I used not just my family's uh, uh, archive, um, I wanted to extend my story to the story of others. So it was uh, already meant to this film to use public archive to tell a private story. Hmm. So when we see some home videos and archival footage, like for example, of people gathering in parties and family dinners, those are not necessarily um, directly associated with your parents? No, mm -hmm. because um, this is the portrait of a, of a period of time as well. So um, it is um, during the years like 60s, 70s, 80s. And um, I use a part of official archive from televisions, that mm -hmm. is, uh, but a big part is home, uh, home movies, which are unofficial archives that I like more because I wanted to have this uh, Super 8 uh, images or has a very good texture, yes. uh, very fit to, my, to this story. It's like memories itself. And it's so I wanted to use vintage Polaroid pictures and uh, yeah, green super eight uh, also from a uh, revolution and some something that I had access to official uh, footages, but I avoid to use them. So I wanted to have very uh, amateurial camera move movements, movings. So we, we see a lot of these photographs from your parents' life and, and some of them are torn up. So when you were a child, you, you did actually uh, pick up the pieces that your mother threw into the trash, basically. Yeah, that was the core idea of uh, doing this film. So the, the first idea came from the family albums, which were... Uh, mutilated albums so that was very meaningful metaphorically as well mm, that that my mother destroyed 
uh, the pictures um, to erase uh, the before revolution, pre-revolutionary era of her life, her past. So um, I wanted to symbolically put them together to create, reconstruct the history, the back of this uh, family um, transformation, the evolution of uh, at the same time inside home and outside home and the, re the reflection of uh, the, uh, the history inside house. So the small history confront with the big history, what is the French people said, petite histoire and <laughs> grande histoire. Uh, speaking of the house, um, I, I, you, you have shown the interior of this house several times in the film. It's shot in a very stylized manner. So the camera like slowly tracks from one end of this, this space to the other end, and sometimes it's in the opposite direction. Um, can you tell us first if this is or was actually your family's house and second, uh, why you decided to present this house in the manner that you did? Um, first of all, I wanted to create a microcosmos of um, a, an interior that everything outside can reflect inside and uh, so the objects were um, replacing removing or um, disappearing that was something that i create on the paper it was everything planned to uh, show this transformation gradually and uh, so i wanted to create like a late mo motif for the whole film as a container of the film as well. This house, this big room, uh, it is not uh, in our real house because uh, I wanted a very big space and an open space to scan uh, the house as uh, a radiography machine could do. Uh, so the X-ray of evolution of a house. Um, so just in the very last sequence is our real house because we are back to the reality at the end of the film real place real person real time uh, so um, that was a plan to get back to uh, to documentary style whereas every scene of the house is uh, staged and it's uh, perfectly calculated. So the uh, painting of a uh, nude woman fall down from the wall or uh, the wine and, and music is banned. So it's disappearing from the house. Um, and another thing that was the direction of the movement I was uh, considered um, the first um, um, shooting scene, the first tracking is from father side. So mm -hmm. it's the father perspective. They are all before revolution. It is five times we see the house and and it's um, Dolce Vita, it's Belle Epoque of the house. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after revolution, we see from the mother's uh, part and it's a uh, so opposite part. So I divided the house. I'm telling that the revolution took place in our house, <laughs> like in every <laughs> Iranian house. And uh, it, this is the uh, division that the, the house is divided in two. And I'm um, also uh, finding other things dividing in two, like the spine of my mother uh, and many, many things is dividing. So this is part of the concept hmm. of the film. I didn't realize in the end of the film is your actual house, it looks like the same house. <laughs> <laughs> 
and uh, that's that's really wonderful to know. Um, let's talk about the the dialogues conveyed through voiceover. You you have actors. Um, they they play the voices of your parents. Um, how did you come up with this idea? And also, how did you write the the lines? Um, it was very difficult to find the um, speech of the film because I didn't want to have an ordinary and. Uh, first person narrator and um, I wanted to find something uh, different and I was trying to write from different point of views to the story. Um, and the storytelling um, was something that I was uh, imagined if I use the dialogues of my parents and I staged it maybe um, I can um, play with um, narrator voice and the dialogues. And I, uh, I had no uh, reference to find some, some other films too, uh, but I, uh, I was based on Chris Marker films first and then mm. on uh, Margarita Duras, um, narration on uh, Hiroshima Monamo. And uh, so it is not uh, now uh, similar to them, but I know that I have influenced by this kind of uh, poetical, very subtle um, dialogues and not, not talking about big issues. It's very ordinary and very everydayness way of talking. Yeah. And so how about the content, what they say to each other? Did you imagine like what those conversations could be between your parents? Um, I imagined many things, but it is all based on something that I've heard or I imagined. Sometimes I, I thought when a child, uh, the, Childhood imaginations seem some somehow more real than reality when when you have some. So uh, as Kiara Sami said always that you are some sometimes uh, lying to reach a greater truth. So uh, this is um, maybe not real yet, but it's true. So it is. Uh, it is something that maybe it's not exactly the thing that my parents um, ha has already in their conversations, but is it that important? I was trying to, to uh, write something could relate it to them and also related to the others. You know, lots of uh, filmmakers think that um, fiction is more honest than nonfiction sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I find it like really helpful with the, the mix of first and third hand material and also fiction and nonfiction. While this story is very personal, very specific to your family, it, it resonates with people who have experienced ruptures in their personal relationships because of larger political and social circumstances. Um, did you have that universal aspect in mind when you were making this film? Yes, I was. Um, um trying to portray an era and a very um, big arc of that time. And I was uh, considering that we have a part before revolution and after. And I put the revolution exactly in the middle of the film, in the timeline, because I wanted to create a symmetry before and after. And um, since my parents' um, a way of uh, thinking and changing was exactly the same thing as 
it was a time. So uh, when it was my father's time, it was in the first half of the film, it was before revolution. And it was some, um, um, the era of occidentalizations, westernization of Iran. And so it corresponds exactly. And after revolution is my, my mother turn. And it is exactly when I said an entire government is behind her. It's a, it's a metaphor that, that is the time of this uh, ideology, this, um, this way of thinking and to live in a very um, a religiously and uh, traditionally as uh, based on very strong values. Uh, so this is that I play with my timeline, but I was aware of what is happening, what, what where happened at certain point. So I um, designed my turning points of the film on the very important uh, moments of revolution, Iran-Iraq war, or in the smaller story of my parents on certain points, like when it has happened, the, uh, the accident in the skiing mm -hmm. for my mother backbones and to play with uh, the scoliosis of my mother, my radiologist father, and this scoliosis was something, a deviation that I wanted to work with it during the film. Mm. So uh, there were some uh, patterns that I was uh, trying to repeat and give them significant, give them some um, power of storytelling. Mm. Um, as a child trapped between two parents with very different worldviews, you learn from very early on to not take sides. Um, when you were making this film, were you concerned that the audience would pick a side? It was a very tricky and difficult and very challenging part of the film. Um, when I was um, writing um, the script, the uh, narration and uh, um, dialogues, I was very um, afraid to, to not, uh, um, not have the balance, not to, to lose the balance. And uh, so um, I wanted to, that the public could give the uh, right to my mother and to my father to understand mother and why she changed uh, and she became revolutionary, she became more religious. Um, and to uh, get closer to them, to this, this emblematic protagonist of the film, because I use my parents as two characters, not, um, so I was uh, trying to uh, be fair, to be very, as, as a child, when, uh, when your child, since you love your parents uh, equally in the same time, and uh, so you have the very balanced point of view because of love. So uh, I choose that the uh, narrator remain in the childhood and she's at the same age for the whole film. First, I wanted that we lose the notion of the time in certain points of the film, and it's not important when it is exactly. Uh, the second thing that uh, a child has a very fair and uh, two parents are uh, two hands of you, so it's uh, it's equal. Um, but when it's finished now, there are people, they're asking me, why you don't take part? This is not, uh, you have to have your position. 
so that's all my uh, attempt, all my effort was to find, to not judge and uh, to not also leave place to be judged after. But now this is in the mind of the viewers that they take part of my mother or my father <laughs> or they are all <laughs> always judging. <laughs> and uh, you know that in Iran, the press is full of this taking part ideologically or also it's the taking part of the social class of the many things that I was not uh, thinking during the years of making this film. Um, so you, you present your, your father and your mother to us without suggesting a preference, understandably. Um, I think before the revolution, your father appears to be the more dominant voice in the marriage. Um, after the revolution, your mother's side literally won the cultural war, right? Um, I find your mother's trajectory particularly interesting. In a patriarchal society, we see this feminist subtest, right? Uh, whether the audience identifies with her choices is one thing, but I think it is actually quite special to see this woman finding her voice, standing strong and, and living for her beliefs. Yeah, very <laughs> good uh, thing that you mentioned. Um, yeah, the dominance of my father at home is getting the legitimacy from outside. So if my father is um, a secular father, a very modern and um, lover of art and music and life, his ideology is uh, enjoy, is uh, living in a proper, he was very responsible in his job, but he, at the same time, he liked to have parties, to um, uh, listen music, and um, and to have fun. That was that time. And when um, when the mother became revolutionary. The dominance of her ideology, her values, and her um, attitude, and the legitimacy of her activities is getting from outside home. Is the time of this getting back to the values, uh, Islamic values, and um, so uh, the point that you mentioned that the revolution gave a big role to these women. So. The stereotype that revolution was against the women's activities or women's um, um, social and professional identity is not true because a part of women, the religious women, the traditionalist women uh, find their space in public spaces, in the institutions, and they, they um, um, they went out of their homes and they, uh, they feel at their ease because of the Islamization of the public spaces. Um, so this is the power of Iranian religious women that today, still today, they are very well educated, they are working and it's their turn. It is interesting. Um... The film doesn't review your political or religious beliefs and how you chose to live your life and where you went. Um, I don't know whether you feel comfortable telling us um, about yourself and your own trajectory. Um, how did you yeah. end up to be a yeah. filmmaker or doing whatever you do? Yeah. Um, first, uh, this film is an 
personal my personal essay and uh, that I was trying to link it to a topical essay that is um, um, what has happened in the history, in the country, in the society. So a reflection and a mirror of the uh, reality that I was trying to do. To find it in a very small family history, family story. So in a house, so scanning a house, scanning a body, scanning a history, scanning a uh, country. Um, but uh, as Trufa said, uh, that uh, he said, um, this is for you, it is, a, it is just a film. For me, it's all my life. So this, this is my lifetime uh, experience of being torn between two poles. This dichotomy inside the house is the same as dichotomy in our society. And it is, um, mm, I did this film, I think at the uh, right uh, time to have enough distance with my past and to be, um, and not to be very sentimentally involved in the film because I need to deal with this past as an artwork. So I tried to use this life material to, uh, to find a cinematographic language to tell this story. Um, yeah, this is the film that I um, spent four years and I, I uh, experienced the greatest, the deepest suffering therapy <laughs> and uh, also pleasure and uh, during the years of making this film. Before this, I made several films, but they're always dealing with power and the individual um, um, censorship and self-censorship. So other things, bipolarization of Iranian society and Islamic education. And uh, one is about plastic mannequins in the window shops of Tehran and uh, that they are mutilated. So I use this metaphor uh, mm -hmm. for the Islamically correct bodies. Um, so um, I, um, I did my studies in Italy I, uh, I went to um, Academia uh, of Fine Arts. Then I wanted to get, um, after uh, graduation, I wanted to come back to Iran uh, because my, of my parents and my father was ill at that time. And, um, and then uh, also all my ideas uh, come from Iranian reality, Iranian society. And I don't know how, what to do elsewhere. All my subjects are here. <laughs> and uh, Iran is a very interesting, complex, and picturesque reality to, to work on it. And uh, I'm happy to stay here and to work here. Yeah. Um, has this film changed the way you look at documentary filmmaking? Because um, it seems to be a, quite different from the other yeah. documentaries you've made. Yeah, I think I can't um, get back to classic, classical documentaries anymore. Um, and this form is, um, is something that I want to develop it more, a kind of nonfiction, something between fact and fiction. And, uh, and this is uh, that from my visual art um, background that I want to do more 
art house films than uh, social or documentaries. And um, I like very much the form of personal stay. So I want to continue this uh, form, structure, and this way of storytelling. Mm. Um, do you have plan to show this film in Iran? Um... Uh, yes, but for uh, because of the pandemic situation, everything is closed and I don't know when and how. But the film is uh, vastly seen by um, my friends and family and uh, some private screenings that I invited uh, colleagues and friends. But, uh, and there are very good press release on it in Iran. Hmm. Interviews and um, analysis and it is, uh, they covered very well uh, from the psychologist point of view, sociology, <laughs> semiology, and aesthetics, and it's, it's a very good um, feedback. But I told you, I also received many um, controversial feedbacks on ideological point of view not aesthetic or, or the not in a cinematographic language mm. it's more something political uh, right? else. Yes. and what are they can you tell us some some of the controversial remarks <laughs> uh, that uh, first day um, there are people that they accuse me to not having um, your position this ah. is who are you uh, what is that's something that is very clear in the film um, or um, from the uh, opposition from um, outside Iran um, they accuse me to uh, recognize and uh, legitimize the Islamic Republic that is I'm living in this context, it's, this exists and it is. So uh, who uh, am I to recognize or <laughs> so? Uh, and from the other part, I had like a feedback from a very um, revolutionary uh, person that you gave an image, Im Im you gave a very nice and positive Im image from before revolution that everything was very relaxed. The people are very enjoying their lives, <laughs> dancing. <laughs> and in the second part is war and <laughs> every and pressure and so on. So this is not fair for their point of view. So mm, this is something that I'm dealing with uh, different opinions. And I'm very happy that there are many different aspects of uh, looking in inside the reality. So uh, this is that everyone uh, find uh, her or himself inside the film is a very good uh, thing. I think uh, that's um, um, interesting that um, the people could relate their life inside this uh, drama. Yeah, and and the truth is, I think a film is far more successful when you have like polarized polarizing views. Like people, people have yeah. like very strong feelings about it, yeah. whether it's good or bad. But before we close the discussion, I, I want to hear how does your mother feel about the film. She absolutely loves the film. She has seen several times. Every time I invite a person, she wants to watch it again. And um, she recognized uh, every single word that I put in her mouth. So this is very good. Sometimes uh, she asks me, am I 
tell you this or that or you have imagined so this is very nice that uh, that correspond and what she remember of her past and now yeah well congratulations um i hope a lot of people get to see this film and i i'm just so sad that i cannot meet you here in new york but um hopefully um there will i be wish i could attend the festival <laughs> and i really? i am i'm dying to go to tehran i one day i'm gonna make it there i'm pretty sure <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> good. Well, thank we you so happy much. Happy to have yeah. you here in Tehran, in at our place. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, and um, good luck. And I hope to stay in touch and let me know about your next work. Thank you. Yeah, of course, with pleasure. Thank you for the good conversation, and uh, hope uh, your audience enjoyed that film and uh, good luck. Good luck Thank to you. you too. Thank you.